This is New Season Strong, New Season Nation, broadcasting live from 5711 Shoal Road. Man, where is your worship today? Where is your praise? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be yes. glad in it. Amen. How was your week? Wonderful. Awesome. So this week we had Teachers Appreciation Day. And I know there's a lot of people appreciating teachers right now. Amen. Amen. We're in the midst of Nurses Appreciation Week. And wow, do we appreciate our nurses right now. Yes? Thursday, Thursday was National Prayer Day. And today is Mother's Day. Amen. 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 First of all, I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and all the women who have impacted our lives. And we had mothers who have taught us everything. Amen. They have nursed our boo-boos and definitely <laughs> prayed for us. Amen. 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 So I honor the legacy our mothers have left us to um, take on the torch and empower our young women. And I thank you for the mothers who are still alive and still empowering us to do more and more each day. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is the merchant ships. She likes the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and, and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perce perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hand to the staff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household for all of her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies stashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is a law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you today. Lord, lifting you up and praising you, Heavenly Father, for you have brought us together one more time. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, because we can look back over this week and we know that, Lord, that you have kept us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come today lifting you up and praising you in song, Heavenly Father, and in deed. Lord, we ask that your spirit not only fill this sanctuary, but also the airways, Heavenly Father. Touch each and every one, Heavenly Father, with your spirit, O Lord. Father, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that everything that we do is in your honor, O Lord. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 <coughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, all right. visions of rapture. Now burst on the sight, yes, yes. angels descending, bring from above, yes, yes. echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. Yes, yes. I in my Savior yes. am happy and blessed. Yes, yes. Watching and waiting. Yes. Looking above. Filled with his goodness. Lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You know, there's a special song to me, and I'm sure everyone else love this song but there is a name that we love to hear amen amen and we love to sing its worth yeah because
because it sounds like music yes. in our ear. Mm. It's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes. Because he first loved me. Amen. 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 There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, because he first loved me, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what the Father hath in store for every day and though i tread a darksome path you sunshine all the way oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus oh how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woes, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Amen. Amen. Good morning, New Season Ministry. Amen. It is a pleasure to be able to stand before you and to just have God's fresh air in our lungs, amen? amen? I know for some of us, this epidemic, pandem pandemic is a bit of a bother and a pain, but it could be a whole lot worse, amen? amen. God has allowed our minutes to roll on and he's still in the soul-saving, soul-keeping business. Amen? So why don't we give God a hand clap of praise this morning? <laughs> now, for those of you in the Zoom room, if you would please mute your mics. We're getting a lot of feedback, and it's making it a little tenuous for us to be able to move forward. Amen. So please mute your microphones. 
Let me take this opportunity to say to each mother, Happy Mother's Day. Whether you were mother by birth, by adoption, or you just love somebody enough that you didn't birth them under your heart, but you birthed them in your heart, I say Happy Mother's Day to you. I pray that God blesses you and gives you all the riches you deserve. And I pray that this day is a day of thanksgiving for you. I don't care how wayward we've gotten. There's something about mama's love that always draws us back to her side when we need her. So we thank you. My mother is 90 years old. She's in a facility in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So mom, I want you to know I love you and I miss you. And I uh, can't wait till they open up the nursing homes and facilities so we can see you again. All right, I'm gonna ask you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, amen, and the 31st chapter. Amen, the book of Proverbs, 31st chapter. Now it has already been read in your hearing, so I'm going to tell you for your information that I'm going to start at verse 10. Amen. Now, I'm only going to read a very short portion of this. Verse 10 says, <clears throat> Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? rubies. You may be seated. Amen. For some of you, I suspect this is a very daunting reading of the scripture because we already have preconceived notions on what we've heard in the past. And, and maybe this is going to be a sermon that is just like the other sermons that you've heard. But let me give you a scenario. When we were first experiencing how to use computers, there was a time on the computer when things would go haywire and we didn't know what to do. So what people would tell us to do is control Alt and delete. Now, I, I know you think you know what you're going to hear because you've heard multiple sermons on the virtuous woman, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Take your hands like you're doing the control, alt, delete, and push it a couple of times to make sure that you get a refreshed page, a refreshed perspective on this text. For I share with you today that it will not be the same old message. Amen. So join me in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for other, every mother under the sound of my voice. We thank you for not just those under the sound of my voice, but every mother, whatever the circumstances. For they birthed us into the possibility of having a loving relationship with you. And we're so thankful that we have gravitated that way, that we have focused our eyes, not just on the cross, but beyond the cross to the resurrection to you sitting on the right hand of God the Father. And we say thank you for giving us life through them. And our prayer today is that you would bless each of our mothers, whether it's a memory, whether they're still here, bless them above a hundredfold. Keep them in your will and your way. And we pray that you would also bless us as we bow in humble submission to the first promise you gave us. And that was to honor our mothers and our fathers that our days may be long in the land that you have promised us. We thank you, God, for this time. Be with us in this word. Open our ears. Open our spirits. May we receive your ungrafted truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, 
I'm going to ask you to pray with me and to allow me a little bit of latitude this morning. Because it's, it's going to be hard to hear this virtuous woman from another perspective. Amen? So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is not the 10th verse, but let's go over to the first verse for a moment. Amen. The topic of today's message is God's ideal woman. Or I'd like to say God's ideal mother. Amen. Because in our text, the virtuous woman is a mother. Amen. So we already know that. So let's, let's just set it off by looking at the first verse. The first verse says, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, I, I know you're reading it, but I'm asking you to read it again. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So the very first thing we have to observe is the fact that this teaching doesn't come from King Lemuel, but it comes from his mother. Amen. So when we read it, we need to control, alt, delete, and understand that the person who is lifting these truths is not King Lemuel, but King Lemuel's mother. Now, I, 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 I give that to you because we have to understand that the perspective of the text is coming from King Lemuel's mother. Now, you may ask, who is King Lemuel? Well, I, I did some research, and there has never been a King Lemuel in the lineage of the history of Israel. So there are those who, as a matter of fact, according to Hebrew tradition, King Lemuel is the pen name for Solomon. Amen. So if Solomon is the king and he's writing under a pen name, then his mother must be Bathsheba. Now, we all know the story about Bathsheba. She went through some hard times and she went through some changes in her life, but she still was a well-known woman biblically. Amen? So now let's get into the text and into the message. God's ideal mother. In, in this day and age, Scripture has fallen into question because for some odd reason, there are those who would suppose that it questionably marginalizes women and mothers of today. They look at the Bible, they said it was always written with a he pronoun. It was pro-male and it's almost subservient for a woman. So I, I would say to you, suspend that thought for just a minute because we're getting a message that the Bible said King Lemuel's or Solomon mother taught him. So I, I want us to look at the text from her perspective not your perspective, not what you think you know or what you think about it, but let's look at King Lemuel's mother's perspective. And the reason why I suggest this to you is that this is not just any woman, but a woman of stature and of great regard. Amen. She had privilege in her life, and though there was the act with King David... She learned some lessons from King David, and she learned some lessons herself. Amen? And, and what she's saying to Solomon is she says, who can find a virtuous woman? Now, now virtue is high moral standings. And, and, and I suppose that we would say, well, given her background, her morals weren't that high. But I would suggest to you that in that day, when the king made an edict, it was obeyed. And, and, and so we have to look at her 
with a fair perspective in that she was giving in to one who had control, and that was King David. King David married her. He raised her son. And we know that the Bible is very truthful when it says that David was a man after God's own heart. So even in his indiscretion, he learned some things because he said, God, I've sinned against you, and you only have I sinned. He recognized the root cause of sin. So what we have here is her looking at this virtuous woman's life, and, and what she sees is that there's a need for a Gibraltar-like steadfastness in the life of this virtuous woman. Are you praying with me? If you read it in its entirety, it seems like she is giving little room for any misgiving on the part of this virtuous woman. She is giving very little ground for this woman, but what she says is this, and let's look at the text. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Now, what that is saying is this, that his mother looks at her status and her position, and, and she scrutinizes the women of her day and her age, and she sees something. She sees some women who are large and in charge. She sees some women who are doing some magnanimous things. And she says when a woman has high moral virtues and she's about the business of living the right kind of life, her life in terms of its value is far above rubies. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I look at my own mother. And if I am honest with myself, we started out in projects. We started out with very little. But there was something about my mother. The, the other day I was asked, if I had one word to describe my mother, what would that word be? It didn't take me long to figure it out. The one word that I use to describe my mother is there. T-H-E-R-E, -E, there. My mother was a, con a constant in my life. My mother was always there when I needed a mother. And, and, and let me tell you something. When I think about it now, at 70 years of age, she's been with me all my life, and she's still there. I value that far above any amount of money that you could deposit in my checking account. So, 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 so Lemuel's mother... Is, is, is looking at women and women of high virtue and she's saying that they are more precious, more valuable than rubies. And, and, and rubies are a precious stone. So she's, she's not talking about somebody subservient. She's talking about someone who has vigor in her life, someone who has position in her life, someone who has elegance in her life. And, and she's gone beyond, beyond in this description. Now, let, let me preface the text by saying that finding a good wife is not possible with mere human effort. Amen. Finding a good wife is not possible just by our own initiative or drive. It, 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 it's really a God thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a God thing. If, if you want a good woman, let me tell you something. A good woman is also a godly woman. See, because you can be goodly without being godly, but you can't be godly without being goodly. That, 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 that's part of the package deal, if you will. And, and, and let me share something else with you. If you have your Bible right now, turn with me to Proverbs, the 18th chapter. We're going to stay in the same book. Talking about an ideal 
mother. In the 18th chapter, and, and let's look at verse 22. Whosoever findeth a good girlfriend. No, no, it doesn't say that. Whosoever findeth a good fiance. No, it doesn't say that. Now, I understand. Findeth a good wife. That means that everything that you need is already in the package. Amen. What we try to do is we try to find someone and think through the right coaching, through the right conversation, through the right talking, we can make them right. But the Bible lets us know here that what you're looking for ought to be in her when you first meet her. So it's saying right here, when you find it a wife, you find it a good thing. So quit looking for girlfriends and fiancés and start looking fellows for someone who already has the characteristics and the character of a good wife. Amen. Now let's, let's finish the text. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Now, 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 now listen here. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. A -a Amen. So, so you, you just can't pick anybody. You, you can't just look at anybody and say, that's the one. Now, you may say it with your mouth, but if your spirit and your soul are right with the Lord, you've got to let God speak to you and let you know that that's the right wife. Not girlfriend, not fiancé, but the right wife. And then you start the dating process. See, I, I say this, and, and I'll tell anybody this. In the trying of people who we want to determine whether they should be our spouse or not, before you get to the trying out of different people, you ought to have a list of exactly what a godly man or a godly woman is. And what you ought to do is look at that list and then make a determination if the person that you're looking at has the character and characteristics before you even date them. If they don't, don't waste your time. Amen. See, that's a godly woman and a good wife even before you start the process of dating. But when you get that place where you start dating because you found the good wife before you married this person, it says you obtaineth favor of the Lord. And let me tell you something. The Bible lets us know that God knows what we have need of, even when we don't recognize it ourselves. Somebody ought to be saying amen. Finding a good wife is not possible with mere human effort. It's a God thing. Say God thing. God thing. Amen. Now let's go back to the text in 31. It says in the verse 11 that the heart of her husband safely trusts her. Now it's a God thing that to find a good wife. And, and it's saying that because she's in God, it's a safe thing to do what? Trust her. In other words, she gives you value added. How do I know that? Because the Bible said not only is her price far above rubies, but in trusting her so that he shall have no need of spoil. That means it's not a loss. It's nothing negative. She's bringing something to the game, and what she's bringing to the game is the virtuous woman and all that's in package in that virtuous woman. So she's a woman of great force. Now, now let me share something with you you may have missed in the text. The Bible says, first and foremost, that this ideal mother is a woman of business. In other words, she's a businesswoman. 
She's not just around the house sewing and, and knitting and cooking and cleaning. She's a business woman. That, that's first and foremost. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hand. Do you see that? Amen. Verse 14 says, she is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. And in other words, what it's saying is that this woman understands industry. She, she, she understands what it is to go out and deal with commerce and trade. We would say today that she's Fortune 500. She knows how to wheel and deal. She got a brain on her head, on her shoulders. This woman is something else. She's somebody that the husband doesn't have to guard against because he knows that she is taking care of what? Business. Say taking care of business. Look at verse 16. It says she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. Do y'all see that? Huh? This woman is about some heavy business. And verse 24 says... She maketh fine linen and selleth and delivered girdles unto the merchants. Seemed like this person busy, understanding business. She's got her brain on her shoulder. She's not sitting at home in a rocking chair, sitting at home burping a baby. She's about her business. So the first thing we see is she is a business woman. Second, she has domestic concern. And, and the reason why I said that, let's look again at verse 14. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. That, 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 she's taking care of the house. She rises up also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her who? Her maidens. Y'all see that? Amen. Verse 17 says, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengthen her arms. Verse 18, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle does not go out by night. Now, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you read 19, she layeth her hand to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. What is saying here, she has domestic concern because she has her finger on the pulse beat of everything that's going on. She's a businesswoman and she has understanding, complete understanding of what's going on in her home. Now, I don't know about you, but that, that's saying something powerful. That, that, that's saying something that I never heard. I've heard a lot of sermons about the virtuous woman, but it was almost like they were subservient. But this woman is saying, no, Samuel, let me tell you what a virtuous woman really does. Let me tell you how valuable she really is. That's why the Bible says her value is far above rubies. She's a businesswoman. She has domestic concern. And let, let me share this with you. Verse 21 says she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. And look at verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Now, let, let, let me tell you something. We, we, we've heard a lot of things in our lifetime. But one, one, one thing that I'm reminded of is behind every great man, now I'm going to say this, and some of y'all are not going to like it, is a greater woman. Amen. Is a greater woman. Holding it down so that the man can be out and about taking care of his business. She has a pulse speed on what's going on. She's strong. She's a businesswoman. She understands what's going on in her home. And she is doing her J-O-B, her job, to be not only there for the children, but there for the husband, and not in a condescending way, but in a way that allows him to be out and about. 
Now, she's a businesswoman. She has domestic concern. And the third thing, she is socially responsible. She is socially responsible. Well, how, how, how do you know that, Brother Preacher? Well, let's take a look at verse 20. It says she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Do you all understand what I'm saying? She's taking care of business. She's taking care of home. And she's also out and about seeing to the needy and those who are less fortunate than she is. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to see a picture of how Lemuel's mother is saying, Samuel, I want you to remember these things and I want you to broadcast them, put them out there so that the people who follow you know the real truth of the value of a woman. It's far above any rubies. Ooh. So she's a businesswoman. She has domestic concerns. She's socially responsible. And fourth, you ready for this? She fly. She is fly. Yeah, she's fly. I said it. She is F-L-Y. She's fly. Well, how do you know that, Brother Preacher? Well, once again, look at verse 22. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Man, back in those days, having the scarlet color, the purple meant you had something. It meant you, you, you were somebody. You, you, you weren't a lowly somebody. You were a somebody, somebody. And, and so she dressed to the nines like we used to say. She got it all. She's fly. She reflects her sense of self-worth in the clothing she wears. I, I, I don't know about you, but I can see her in my mind. She's walking, and she's standing with her head tall. She's not taking second place to anybody. She's walking tall, and she's walking large. And I'm going to say to her, you go on, lady. You just be what you are, a L-A-D-Y, a lady. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to meet this lady. Amen. I want to meet this lady. Amen. 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 She's fly. So she's a businesswoman. She has domestic concerns. She's socially responsible. She's fly. And fifth, she is held in high esteem. Now, check this out. She's held in what? High esteem. Now, it, 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 it's, it, it's not just in anybody out there's eyes, but she's held in high esteem by her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A and the reason she's held in high esteem by her husband because she takes care of business. Look at verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates where he sitteth among the elders of the land. In other words, she dressing her man. She's taking care of the H-O-U-S-E and the business and all that comes in life. And she's handling her stuff. And people know that this woman is something else. She's taking care of business. She's doing it right. She's holding it down so her man can be out sitting at the gates of the city in high esteem. And, 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 and look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. This is not a man trying to take charge of his house. Uh -uh. He's letting his wife do what she does because he knows that she can do what she do. Amen. She's taking care of business. they taking care of business. She's a businesswoman. She has domestic concern. She is socially responsible. She's fly and she's held in high esteem in the eyes of her husband. Now, I, I, I told you this lady was fly. 
This lady was fly. This lady was fly. She was a woman of great character. Let's look at verse 25 and 26. Okay, it says, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, look at verse 26 again. She opens her mouth with what? Wisdom. And in other words, she has a wellspring of wisdom within her, and she is somebody that is sought out because of her mental processes. And, and it's not just mental processes, but it's a mental process that understands that there's something else that you need to know in order to go forward in life. That there's something else you need to know to go forward in life. Now, now, now let's look at this. Verse 28 says, not only is she fly, and she's a woman of character, and she's a wellspring of wisdom, but look at verse 28, for it says, her children arise up and call her blessed. Now, I, I don't know if you're getting the picture, but usually, we, if we're going to be real, there's a time in life where all of us have gotten to the plate where we loved our parents, but we also loved what our friends were telling us we ought to be doing. There were times when we had an antagonistic relationship with mom and dad, but we still loved them, but we wanted to try to spread our wings. And so sometimes we would say negative things about our parents. No, no one else could say them, but we could say them when we talked to our friends. But this is saying here that her children aren't complaining. They're not talking down. What they're doing is they're rising up and saying, hey, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. That, 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 that's something powerful. That's something that is, mm, it has a life in itself to know that your children aren't just calling you a good mama, but they're calling you a blessed mama. My mother's 90 years old, and I heard this today. I'm, 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 I'm borrowing it. I'm not going to tell you it's mine. My mama cares so much for me that I know even right now at 90 years of age, if you put your hands on me, you're going to get some 90-year-old hands on you. Amen. My, 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 my mothers, there's something about mothers that are, there's a willingness to die for the offspring they bring into life. And I'm telling you, Renee E. Duncan Johnson, she's somebody to deal with. I had to deal with her all my life, <laughs> and she's somebody to deal with. But what I want you to know and understand here is these children rise up and call her blessed. And not only that, but look at verse 28, her husband also, and he praises her. Come on, somebody. This is not a lowly woman. This is not a household subservient. This is a woman who has class. This is a woman who is somebody. This is a woman who has some power, who has some juice, if you will. She real, she large, she's in charge. And when she walks by, I can see him now. Giving her her proper due. Why? Because she's about her business. And her business is God's business. Now, now, now let me tell you this. This fly, virtuous mother, this virtuous woman, she's tight and she's right. And, and, and I suspect if you put her on Front Street, you would find out that she's independent and strong. Amen. Why? Because she knows how to handle her business. She's taking care of business. Amen. And, 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 and I believe in, she's living in her own privilege. Amen. And, and there's a reason she's living in her own privilege. That means there's no excuses. Amen. Because she's doing it right. 
She's doing it tight. But look at verse 31. Verse 31 says, and, 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 and once again, this is Lemuel's mother saying this, give her of the fruit of her hands. We understand the law of sowing and reaping. That means she's given a lot and what must come back to her in greater portion is the good that she gave in every aspect of living. It's now time for it to come back to her. Amen. Read it again. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her see what she, her labor has resulted in. And let me tell you why that's important. Because verse 30, go back to verse 30. It says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that what feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. In other words, what I'm saying, the secret of her success is that she had an authentic relationship with God. And because of that, her wealth and her life reflected her true worth. She was a woman of God. That's why the Bible says, and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything that you've been looking for, everything you've been praying for, everything will come to fruition. Yes, she was an ideal woman. She was industrious. She was about her business. She was an entrepreneur. She was a trader and a generous benefactor and a wise teacher. This lady is what I would call one love. Amen. One love because she was tight and right in her relationship with Almighty God above. Now, let me say this, and I'm, I'm, I'm close with this. When we as gentlemen love a woman and we want to marry and we want to produce a family and, and we think we got the right one, what we do is we, we go in our pocket at the right moment and we get down on one knee and we propose. And the symbol of our proposal, our, 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 our intention and our desire is something called a diamond ring. I was thinking, when, when, when you give someone a diamond ring, the bigger the rock, the more they talk. <laughs> Amen. You give her a little thing that she needs a magnifying glass on, and she, oh, you don't, don't think much of me. <laughs> you give her a big rock, and, and, and what she does is when she talks, she shows off that diamond ring. But I would suggest to you, ladies, if you are a virtuous woman, if you're God's ideal woman, if you stand with stature and stand with devotion to God and you do the right things and you exude the right kind of character, let me tell you that a man will look and find you and not only we find you, he'll try to put a ring on it just like Beyonce says, but I'm here today to tell you, don't wear the ring, be the diamond ring. Be the diamond ring. Amen. Don't wear it. Be it. And when you be the diamond ring, you'll have more than just diamonds. You'll have a life with God and you'll have a life with your family. You'll have a life that says something. You'll be walking down the street. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, 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 bling. They'll see you. Yes, I'm a child of the king. Yes, I'm a woman of God. Yes, I'm everything that God says I am. Yes, I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. Yes. Don't be the diamond ring. I'm sorry, don't wear the diamond ring. Be the diamond ring because the Bible says you're far more precious than any rubies, any precious stone. That's a lady. That's a lady of God. That's a woman of God. And, and women, don't be afraid. If, 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 if you think 
that being a woman of God will keep men away from you, just remember what God says. If you seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, God knows what you have need of. He's going to provide it for you. You, 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 you're looking for a certain look. Let me tell you something about a certain look. When we were all younger, our skin was tight and it was right. We all looked good. But as we get older, things stop dropping, things stop popping, <laughs> and things start creaking. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that prized possession that you had in a him or her, when age comes up, it changes, but our God never changes. And a woman of godly character will never be put to shame because God's word and God's promises to make sure you're connected with the right person. I thank you and I praise God for this message. I hope you begin to see a little difference about this woman. This woman is large and in charge and in some cases, I'm going to tell you guys this, and some of you guys may not like it. In some cases, they let us run the house. They let us think that we're in charge, but we all know the real deal. Amen. We all know the real deal. A godly woman is a great thing. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and this word. We thank you for your message and we pray that you will use it to the greater glory of your kingdom. We truly pray today that your kingdom will come and your will will be done on this earth. We love you and we thank you. And we thank you for our mothers. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Now let me say this to you before I bring up the men, the gentlemen who sang so illustriously, they, I mean, they, they, they were in it. Um, for those of you who are members of New Season Ministry, at 12 o'clock we are going to be here at the church and you can drive by and we have gifts for the women. You don't have to get out of the car, amen. You can stay in the car and we'll put it on a table and there won't be any interchanging between people. You can get your gifts and if you're in need of prayer, our ministers will be here and we'll pray over the car, amen. And we'll even hug the car, amen. <laughs> and we'll get a chance to see you. You can blow your horn, you can wave your hand, but please come by from the eyes starting at 12 o'clock and receive what we have for the mothers. And if you just want to come by for prayer, you want to come by to wish us well, to see our faces, we will be here for you. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Again, I, I hope and pray that you are very much in tune with the new perspective on the virtuous woman and you won't see her so much as being subservient, but see her as a mighty power because I'm gonna be honest with you, a whole lot of us have wives who are mighty powers. They may act quietly, but my daddy used to tell me sometimes you gotta watch some quiet people. Amen. God bless you. And I pray that you have a great Mother's Day and that you have a great time in the Lord. Share Jesus with somebody and let them know that you care. God bless you. Trouble in my way I have to cry sometimes So much trouble I have to cry Sometime I lay awake at night, but that's all right, cause I know Jesus, he will fix it after a while trouble in my way trouble in my way i have to cry 
cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. Because I know that Jesus, Jesus, she will fix it. After a while, after a while, trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know that Jesus, Jesus, she will fix it after a while. After a while. Stepped in the furnace. Stepped in the furnace. A long time ago. Long time ago. Shadrach and Meshach. Shadrach and Meshach. And Abednego. And Abednego. They weren't worried. They weren't worried. But this I know. This I know. I know that Jesus. Jesus, she will fix it. After a while. After a while. Stepped in the furnace. Stepped in the furnace. A long time ago. Long time ago. Shadrach and Meshach. Shadrach and Meshach. And Abednego. And Abednego. They weren't worried. They weren't worried. For this I know. This I know. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. He fixed it for my mother. Jesus, he will fix it. I know he will. Jesus, he he will fix it. I wonder. Jesus, he will fix it. I just wonder. Jesus, he will fix it. Is there anybody here? Jesus, he will fix it. That know he'll fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that he will. Jesus, he will fix it. Whatever it is. Jesus, he will fix it. Whatever it is. Jesus, he will fix it. There's nothing too hard. Jesus, he will fix it. For my God. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. He fixed it for me. Jesus, he will fix it. He'll fix it for you. Jesus, he will fix it. For my God. Jesus, he will fix it. I know he'll fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that he'll fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, after a while. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, we just thank you again for this wonderful service, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the time that your spirit has been with us today, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would go with us now, O oh Lord, as we leave this place or leave this sanctuary, or even leave Heavenly Father Zoom, we know that you are still with us, O oh Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to be with the mothers today. Bless them, Heavenly Father, and let them have a wonderful day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>